Hello, my name is Sip Mendez. Welcome to Sip's Techie Tips. In this video, we're going to look at the Akai MPK Mini MK3. And I have had this MIDI in the box for almost three years. And um, I had a problem with it that I finally got a solution to. And that is, it just wouldn't play very loud. And I went out on the internet, and I did find a solution that I did not understand. And so this video is to help explain how velocity curves work. But before we do that, I want to thank everybody who's been watching the videos. I really appreciate it, especially the comments questions. If you've got questions, I'll work on the answers for you. And um, subscribers, if you're not, I really appreciate subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. If you want to be notified of each new video, click on the bell. So let's take a look at this. This is a representation of the, the original velocity curve. Now, the knobs in the display, they can only show values between 0 and 40. Now, what actually gets sent to the MIDI are values between 0 and 127, with 127 being full volume. Now, it was originally set in this manner, and 24 was the greatest value. V1 controls the top value. Now you can turn the knobs to adjust them up, but there are some restrictions. And one of the restrictions is that V1 is the maximum number that can be sent. And then the other restriction is that V2 cannot be as great as V1, V3 cannot be as great as V2, and V4 cannot be as great as V3. And so what I did on the first time around was I turned the knobs until the display quit turning. So I wound up with, with um, a line directly under this line. The greatest value in the display was set at 24.2. And if I turned the knob, it wouldn't go any higher. And that was sending a number probably around 72. And that means that the volume being sent to um, the MIDI was 72, which is a lot less than 127. And that's why it was produces such a low uh, volume notes. No matter how hard you hit the keys, it's never going to be any louder. So the first solution <laughs> is to um, start turning, is to raise all of the other ones. So if you raise all of these to this line, then it allows you to raise this one up higher and raise all of them again and you can raise it up higher and eventually you can get it to to 40. But each one you you'll eventually wind up with 40, 39, 38, 37. And it would look like this. Now that seems like a great solution and it is. If you're a beginner then it's a great solution because as soon as you press the keys uh, you get a loud volume. Okay. Now, the uh, con to this solution is that you get what is commonly called the uh, toy piano effect. That no matter which key you hit, you're going to get full volume. And you can't build or produce um, music that has that emotion to it, where you have soft notes, medium notes, high notes, and it's, it, adds, it loses that dimension let's say. All right, so the uh, next solution is to go from 
full to a linear solution. And that's where, if you, if you hit it with enough speed to produce a 10, it'll send 32, which is a quarter as loud as, as it can be. If you can produce a 20, which is half as note, half as uh, loud, it'll send a 64, which tells it half volume. And if you hit it with enough speed to, to produce a 30, then it sends a 96, which is a quarter as loud. And if you send it a 40, it does full volume 127. Well, on, in the graph, it looks great. But you still have to hit the keys quite hard in order to get a full volume. So the next uh, iteration is to create maybe a modified curve. This is what a modified curve might look like. So if you produce enough speed for a 25, it'll send an 80 as far as um, MIDI velocity. Don't, please don't check my math. <laughs> I'm kind of uh, just guessing. <laughs> then, if you, if you can produce a 35, then you will get a 102 maybe. And if you hit a 38, you'll almost be to 40, but anywhere between 38 and 40, you'll be getting almost full volume. And so that makes it a little bit easier to produce really nice loud notes. And I think that is uh, probably the best one to try. This is the full level. And it only controls the drums. Now if you press it, then you get full volume on the drum pads. Now, if you hold down the um, full level button for five seconds, it changes the display. So this is the little display we're talking about, and um, and it's the hidden menu. K1 controls V1, K2, V2, K3, V3, K4 is uh, V4. And then K5 controls the black-white balance. So right now, it is set to V1, 40. V2 is 39.8. V3, 39.6. V4, 39.4. And my black balance is set at 0.6. And now, so to change the values, all you do is rotate the knobs. And to save your, your modifications, all you have to do is press and hold the full level button until the display changes back to its normal state. Stop. Well, I think I learned a lot about this little MIDI. I surely did. And I hope you learned something, too. And this is really a nice MIDI. You know, um, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I buy these myself. And, um, but this one's really good. Very good because it is so compact. It's got a lot of nice features. It does a lot of nice stuff. And I think you can get a lot out of it. So, uh, thank you for watching the video. And if you got a comment, leave me a comment. I love comments. I love questions. I'll try to get the back to you on the answers. And if you're not a subscriber, click on subscribe. And if you're not a member of YouTube, uh, sign up for an account. It's quick. It's easy. And don't forget to click on the bell if you want to be notified of each new video. So until next time, take care.